Hello, welcome back to Oracle DBA tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to discuss about autonomous transaction and you know how how you create an autom autonomous transaction and then why do you want to create an autonomous transaction? All right. So basically, uh, autonomous transaction uh, allows you to create a new transaction within a transaction that may commit or rollback changes. So independent of your parent transactions. So let's say your transaction T1 is uh, let's say this is transaction T1 and then you are trying to insert uh, say into a table say A right and then the you know, next statement is uh, you are updating table B and and, and is, is going so on and then eventually you are going to do a commit and then in that case the transaction T1 is going to finish but it may necessary it may it may require that we are going to create another independent transaction inside this main transaction t1 say let's say this is a statement number one statement number two and then let's say at the statement statement number of three i started another transaction which is a part of this main transaction but it is independent okay and then maybe like you now line number 10 i have another statement is say s10 so from 2 to 10 i create i i i I create an independent transaction and that independent transaction can commit a rollback independent of the parent transaction let's say this is called T2 so this T2 can can be committed or rolled back and without affecting the state of the parent transaction and that is what is called an autonomous autonomous transaction right so I, I just want to give you uh, a quick uh, you know example and so that that is going to clarify a couple of things so let's say I have a table uh, a in table a I have if I do a select star from me I don't have anything right so there's no roads no roads in selected in this thing okay so then what I'm going to do I'm going to insert into a say the value is equal to set one. So one row created, and then if I do select star from a, I'll see one here, and then I have so another session, and then and I also connected the same user, and if I do select star from a, I don't get anything because I have not committed anything. Right. So if I commit, um, if I'm going to commit in this session, then only I can see in other session. This is according to the database consistency model, right? Because of consistency, uh, we are seeing that. So well, so we, we have uh, you know one row uh, inserted into table A, and then let's say I'm going to insert another row uh, to two, and then I say select star from A. Okay, so one and two. So let's go back to our uh, drawing board and then see like uh, so what we did. Uh, so we started a transaction. So this is the transaction start, and we have inserted one and inserted two to the table A. All right, and then if I so if I see this thing, uh, something is coming. And now I'm going to create basically this is a part in, inside this transaction in, inside this main transaction. I'm going to create another transaction. And then to do that, what I'm going to show you, I'm going to write a PLSQL block. So this is a PLSQL block where I say that whatever is going to happen from now onwards is going to be a part of an autonomous transaction. By declaring pragma, I, I say that down the line, whatever we are going to do is going to be an autonomous transaction. And inside this, uh, you know, PLSQL body, what I'm going to in a for loop, I'm going to insert uh, seven rows starting from t three up to ten, all right. And then when I when I, when this thing is going to do, and then I'm doing a commit here. So basically, essentially, uh, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to start a autonomous transaction, and then insert three up to insert ten. So basically, seven SQL insert statements I'm going to do, and then I'm doing a commit. So look, this is the autonomous transaction. Okay, why it's autonomous transaction? Because I define that. Okay, I say that pragma autonomous transaction. Then what essentially is going to happen is that whenever doing the commit, all this three to ten, this seven rows is committed, is made in database permanent. 
okay but this one and two are not still committed and we just want to show you that in this uh, scenario so now what I'm going to so I have two rows inserted and then I'm going to write this PLSQL block I just want to copy it so here it is and then so if I do so the PLSQL procedure is executed successfully and now if I do select select star from May okay so as you see like now I'm going to get one two three up to ten and if I'm going to see in the other window select star from A so how much I should see so select star from A instead of look instead of getting 10 rows here I'm going to get 7 rows thing is that if, if you go back to this thing so I just commit this part I just commit the inner part of the transaction that is starting from 3 up to 10 but still 1 and 2 are not committed understand my point so 1 and 2 are not committed because I have not given any any commit or rollback here so if I say for example after this transaction after this autonomous transaction if I do a commit then only 1 and 2 are going to be inserted uh, then 1 and 2 will be committed okay so that is the deal about autonomous transaction and so let's say like let's say for example after this uh, in this in this after 10 row selected if I do a rollback so what's going to happen if I do a rollback then let's go back to our thing so you know so this is already committed this independent of independent transaction autonomous transaction is committed if I roll back so it's going to roll back to the transaction point this one that means 1 and 2 is going to be removed and uh, let's say if I say roll back and then if I do select sorry uh, if I do select star from A here and I don't I no more see 1 and 2 okay so that means the definition of autonomous transaction what we told that this autonomous transaction may commit or rollback changes independent of the parent transaction so as you see that it didn't affect anything to the parent transaction so don't confuse it yourself like you know so essentially what I'm saying is this is not same as or same as I1 I2 then whatever I3 and I10 commit so if you do this thing then all this thing will committed but remember this part i3 they are part of a different transaction nothing to do with the main transaction whatever we uh, we started okay so now the curious question is that uh, starting from oracle 8i oracle start to support this autonomous transaction concept so why we need autonomous transaction okay so imagine a condition where you want to log uh, an error so log up log error to a DB table. That means, say you are you are doing some PLSQL, uh, you know, um, transaction, you know, some SQL SQL transaction uh, SQL statements. I one insert two, and then you, you you figure out that you know this insert two has some error or something. In that case, what you do, what you want to do, you want to start immediately a new transaction, and then write then insert to a log table. Okay, so insert to a log table and say that you know, say what is the error it is, you know, what kind of error you are getting, and then whenever you are inserting that log table, you just want to commit that log table because I want to keep track of the error, and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to roll back this I1 and I2. Okay, so exactly what, what is happening here, like inside this, like you know, say I1, I2 is going on, and let's say we saw some, we saw some error or something. Okay, so in that case, we we'll immediately start a block which should be autonomous transaction you know autonomous transaction where we are going to put the log files to a log table and commit that because that is a requirement that I have to commit that you know if I don't commit then again I don't you know next time I'm going to see the log table I'm not able to see I'm, I'm not able to find out what is the you know what is the error, error log and so so that is the reason that is the one reason why we uh, use autonomous transaction in a lot of places and second one is that in a, in a database trigger in the DB trigger you are not allowed to write any commit or rollback the reason is we Oracle wants to give you statement level atomicity we discuss all these things in detail in couple of you know videos before this this video okay so please please take a look at that statement level atomicity in the uh, in the atomicity property video and then but however what we want to do sometimes the requirement is that we want to commit and roll back inside the trigger so if you want to do a commit and rollback inside the trigger 
then while you are creating that trigger make that as an autonomous transaction okay so that means you know whenever you in, in, in if you know in, in a trigger basically trigger is nothing but a plc equal procedure right so make that plc equal procedure to be autonomous so if you do that then you can use commit and rollback inside that trigger and why i need commit and rollback because i want to make something persistent all right so 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 that is a, you know there are two two reasons but you can do a lot of other things like you know if you want to do a, a retry count and all this thing so there are there are there are a lot of cases where you want to uh, do a commit inside the middle of a transaction but not necessarily you want to commit the whole transaction okay so in the, in those cases we need autonomous transaction and then starting from oracle 8i oracle provides you that